Thank you. The last speaker of today's uh, webinar, Dr. Manish Garg. He's from India and he's going to talk about C1 and C2 recurrent meningioma. Uh, hello, good evening, everyone. So I am presenting this small case uh, which we, which is operated last week at Benton Hospital. It is recurrent C1 C2 ventral meningioma. So basically, meningioma is the second most common intervertebral spinal tumors. 25% of all spinal tumors here. And with ventral attachment is very challenging pathology. Spinal meningioma has very low recurrence rates. And several approach and technical modifications have been proposed for total and safe dissection of tumors. Commonly, C1, C2 meningiomas involve forearm magnum and classify within cranial cervical meningiomas. So they have benign character and significantly higher MIB1 index, but a high rate of recurrence was not observed in these tumors. Approaches are very high morbidity and so not, not justified. There is five percent recurrence rate after tumor removal. So clinical presentations, they are untypical nerve duty stimulation and compression syndromes like uh, hospital neuralgia, cervical spondylitis, or scapulohumeral parathritis, among others. However, some patients are not diagnosed and until experience limb paralysis and bowel dysfunction. Sensory disturbances are the most common symptoms during the course of progress, which can be characterized by numbness of limbs, girdle sensation, and unstable walking. So relevant anatomy related to the surgical approaches of the C1-C2 ventral meningiomas. The mean settled diameters at the levels of atlas and axis are 23 and 20 millimeter respectively. Subaxial spine, the red diameter is only 50 millimeter. The cervical bulge of the spinal cord also begins below the axis. So all these give us the adequate space at the C1-C2 core level. So at, so at the hospital and at the levels, the facetal pillars lie entire to the nerve roots, exiting through the interventor foramina. So these are the few for the anatomy revising, that is the pedicles, superficial facets and the lamina of C2 and C1 anterior arc, superior facets and the lateral masses with vert vertebratic groups showing and the arrow. The few diagrams, again, that is after the Dissection of the occipital keratomy. We can see the spinal cord and the pica region. And after the removal of the atlas and axis bone, we can see the cranial <coughs> nerves 11, C1, C2 roots. And also the two vertebral arteries which are forming the basal artery. <coughs> now, the, the posteriorly First diagram shows the posterior approach, which shows C1 and C2. And that <laughs> second diagram is posterior lateral approach, which we can see there is an atlas, and I see there is a C2, C2 calcium and the vertebral artery. And last one is the far lateral approach, which we see from the superior facet and the inferior facet and the vertebral artery and the C2 calcium. So basically, approach is patient positioning. It may be prone, three-fourth prone, lateral park bench, sitting position. Each of the positions allows focusing the surgical process on the occipital condyle and the vertebral artery region. So most important in C1-C2 approach is the occipital condyle and the vertebral artery anatomy. So coming to the approaches, anterior approach and uh, basically posterior approach. Anterior approach, that is transferal advantage is direct access to the tumor with no cord detection. Disadvantage later extension of the tumor cannot be assessed and higher risk of infection. Posterior approach standard posterior bilateral anatomy with or without subosteral craniectomy. Advantage are lesser risk of instability. It is one of the simplest procedure and disadvantage no access to extrafemoral tumor. Inadequate access to anterior and related tumor. So later approach the later access which is directed to the later of the craniocervical junction and includes from top to bottom. The jugular tubercle, occipital condyle, lateral mass of the atlas, and the later part of the c body. Again, the key structure in this approach is the vertebral artery, which courses around the lateral wall. So the graphical representation of different approaches. If our tumor is intradural and posterior midline, the posterior approach 
can be done if tumor is lateral or anterior the postulate approach can be done if the tumor is intradural also extradural then postulate or anterior approach and tumor is extradural only then the again postulate or anterior approach so this is a graphic uh, diagram the yellow arrow shows the lateral uh, far lateral approach and the red arrow shows the lateral approach so basically lateral approach uh, we remove we remove the uh, occipital condyle or uh, c1 or c2 medial facets in far lateral approach we also remove the is sometimes dense so coming to the posterior lateral approaches laminectomy and partial medial facectomy advantage are no roots or vessels intervene in the path root sacrifices and uh, dental ligament sensitivity incision on the dura or contribute to the increasing the field of view in the approach disadvantage extra spinal component not adequately assessed hence recurrence may occur polar tumor in immediate contact with vertebral assessing on the dural all artery may not be visible lateral that is far lateral transplantal approach advantage direct visualization of anterior cavity junction removal of both extra intradural component facilitated interface between the tumor and the anterior surface of cord is well made out lateral of the dura avoids force factor that may cause excessive mobilization of the cord in true anterior or anterior lateral lesions access to instance of the tumor above the foramen is possible and post operative scarring makes is unsuitable for tackling recurrence disadvantage of lateral approach need for sterilization is more than the one third hospital condyle is dealt and bilateral tumors cannot be dealt with in the same setting that are the lateral advantage disadvantage so coming to our case which we operated last week he is a 73 year old male initially presented in 2007 with complaints of cervical gia numbness all the limbs and weakness in all limbs more in the lower than upper limbs ct images and mri shows entroventral placed lesion extending from c1 to c2 lower border more on the left side attached to anterior dorsometer intradural extradural lesion patient operated in 2007 and tumor was resected through post approach post operative patient recovered his symptoms and discharge and living his life normally but since last 6 months that is in from uh, around october 2019 after 13 years of first surgery he started to had gait instability weakness in lower limbs and upper limbs which was more on the left side patient was evaluated ct mri done shows recurrent lesion at c1 c2 entroventral place intradural lesion with significant compression of the cord so these are the mri images of uh, recurrent tumor which which we saw tumor is entroventral placed more on the left side around c1 c2 region so surgery is planned the first picture shows the previous incision and the second picture is which we have done ct and the, this blue region is shows the defect of the previous surgery so surgery plan, now surgery planned more of the bone extension and so we have done some facet medial facetomy also included so these are the picture first picture shows the tumor and the second picture shows after the tumor excision and that is the final after dural closure so these are the pre op images of the mri which shows the tumor and the post op images we can show the almost uh, that is a complete excision of the tumor and in the post images in the ct there is a c1 c1 lateral is removed and also in the c2 bilateral laminectomy plus left side medial facectomy is removed that is a blue arrow that is showing medial facectomy facets removed and then the, again the that image video of image which is shows the blue area that is the area of bone defect and this post op image which so increase our image increase so the post op really patient doing well wheelchair ambulatory and i recovered his regularly recovering his power discussion is that the factors leading to recurrence are the young age of the patient subtotal dissection of the lesion calcification extradural attachment and multiplicity of lesions and anterior placement so conclusion is that all the spinal meningiomas are rare to recover our case implies that patient needs to be follow up and imaging should be done regularly as long as a patient is active in his life 
Thanks. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Garg. Any question? So how much difficult was it to get to the most enteromedial part of the tumor from a posterior approach? Enteromedial, again, that posterior, we have to go far later or as then we we'll go to the enteromedial. Then we can approach yeah. the enteromedial. Why only we have posterior foot, we can't... Uh, yeah. the There's some audio problems, Alberto, I think. Andromeda. Yeah, probably there are some problems with connection. Yeah. You might be able to text that question. Yeah, yeah. Or do you want to uh, try again to answer my question, uh, Dr. Garg? Because we had some problems hearing you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm seeing. Yeah, I'm seeing. Like, 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 can't go we have to go. Far lateral or lateral or even esteem lateral, so we can assess to the endomedial tumors. Okay, so a more lateral approach as oh, possible more to get. Okay, to get more enteromedial. More enteromedial tumors. Hmm. Okay, any other question? Okay, if yeah. yeah. Like low position or sitting position. And in sitting position, the blood will be pulling downwards. It will, will not be in the field, not like in the prone position. So, what's your preference? Uh, uh, pardon, I, I don't hear what you have said. I'm asking, what do you prefer, the prone position or the sitting position? Do you, do you prefer the prone position uh, or approach, sitting? In lateral approach. Uh, for tumors, we, for tumors like we, uh, the we one you showed, three, three for the prone approach. We don't do generally in sitting. Okay, we didn't get probably the yeah, answer. Can can you can you try again, Doctor Garg, to answer the question? Yeah. Please. Yeah, we uh, we prefer the three prone approach or three for prone approach. We not preferred sitting position. Okay, so you don't use usually the sitting position for this. Yeah, usually we don't do sitting position. Okay, do you, uh, Dr. Walid, do you have uh, experience about the uh, sitting position with these tumors? Yeah, yeah, we do the sitting position so that the field is always clear and the, the blood is on the inferior portion of the feet so we can dissect the arachnoid from around the tumor and we can cut this. We do the wrong position, but the, the feed is always bloody in such a case. Right. Okay. Gravity is uh, important in this uh, in this kind of surgeries. Yes. Uh, one so, question to Dr. Ali. Uh, in sitting question, how about the CSF drainage? In the uh, do you any time feel that there is too much of CSF that drains through the spine? Uh, I can I didn't hear you. Well. Can you just make your voice loud a little bit? Sitting question. Could you repeat question, the question, please? Uh, in cervical spinal tumor, in sitting position, what is your experience about the amount of CSF that drains out? About CSF that what? During intradural surgeries and intraarachnoid surgeries, do you feel that there is too much of CSF draining out in sitting With position? He means uh, in the sitting position, CSF can flow out. From uh, from the wound, you know, postoperatively. No, no, intraoperatively. I I think. Yes. So you probably he is mentioning about uh, uh, pneumoencephalon uh, after after surgery. So during surgery, in sitting position, of course, you have uh, more CSF uh, uh, draining out. So. So do you, do you experience we didn't, any of any... we didn't have a problem in that at all, even in sitting or in prone. And the most important thing at the end of the operation is tight closure of the dual. It is one of the most important thing. Uh, and I wanna ask about in this tumor, what do you do if when you find the, the tumor is attached to the dura? Do you get part of the dura or you just coagulate 
and it's like a graph suture the neural. The, this question is for Dr. Garg. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Dr. Garg, yeah, well, do you usually reject the implantation, the dural implantation of these meningiomas or just uh, coagulate the dura? Non, uh, no, no, we generally don't use the coagulated in the spine. In the spine. If we remove the posterior, we can uh, enter later, we can uh, go there and then coagulate the dura and enter dura. Yeah, but I, I think uh, Dr. Walid uh, is asking if you, if you do coagulation of the implantation of the meningioma or if you actually resect the dura. Yeah, yes. yeah. So posterior yeah. approach, yeah. we take the dura. Take the dura. Yeah. Then we, after surgery, we use dura gen or at closure. closure. Hmm. This is an audio nightmare. <laughs> yeah, it's a problem with uh, with audio, but I think uh, I think uh, he said uh, they replace the dura, right? No, no. Uh, what he he tried to say was uh, in surgeries, what? it's fine. Coagulation is used to the minimum, and of if course, at all yeah. there is an attachment to the dura anteriorly, if resection is possible. We go ahead with resection, and if necessary, we replace it with an artificial substitute, like a collagen substitute or an artificial dura or something like that. But in most cases, in cervical spine, I feel the coagulation is a bit risky, so. So being anterior, being anterior I uh, resecting of the dura will cause any problem with the CSF leak and such. So I think we can possibly so we go can and resect the possible extent of the dura. So Dr. Walid, do you coagulate or remove the dura in uh, these cases? I would dissect, dissect the tumor from the dura and it's mainly according to the age of the patient. If the patient is young, I would like to, the attachment to the dura, I would like to remove part of it so that to prevent like as much as I can from recurrence. If the patient is, is if he is an old age patient, I would coagulate and suture the dura. It's mainly according to the age of the patient. So more aggressive for younger people, you say? Yes. Okay, fair enough. Okay. Okay, other questions? If there are no other questions, maybe Aravind, we can close. Yes, um, I think webinar. that if there are no more questions, I think we can bring this uh, wonderful mm. webinar to an end. Yes, uh, thank you very much. I'd like to uh, thank everyone for participating and uh, thank you very much, Malesh for all your help uh, and uh, I apologize for the tech. Just be patient, we'll get better with the connections and the sound. And uh, we're always open to televise conferences or webinars. I think we'll get, they're gonna get more common now that Corona has put severe travel restrictions in the world. So the door is always open and uh, thanks everyone for participating. Thank Good you day. very much. Good day, Alberto. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.